their, their business directories back on the back table there. Pick up a supply of them and make them available to your customers. Also, we have some Shop Ohio County table tents that are available on the back table as well. Pick you up some of those. Um, make sure you call the office if you want to participate in the Small Business Saturday activities. We have partnered with OC Tourism and Beaverdam Tourism to make shopping bags available for those retail businesses who want to participate. Anyone can include promotional items, business cards, or coupons to go on those. So. Um, also, watch for announcements on awards nominations for 2018 on our website and Facebook. Copies of the criteria and nomination forms are available today. They're also on the back table. We have a bunch of goodies back there. We will have a float in the Christmas parade. I mentioned that last week or last month. Um, if you want to participate in that, it'll be fun. Just contact one of the board members and everybody's welcome. Andy Flanner's already signed up, so. <laughs> okay, our market calendars, our Christmas gala date is December 18th. Uh, just make sure you put that on your calendar. And I think we're going to draw for the um, November business in the spotlight and the door prize. Okay. Our November business in the spotlight goes to Edward Crawwinkle with Edward Jones. Okay. Get your little tickets out. <coughs> the number is 608-755. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Surprise, back there. Okay, now I'm going to tell you a little bit about our speaker. Uh, Fuller, Fuller Physical Therapy is the program a sponsor, and Brian Belcher will be our speaker. Brian grew up in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and is a 2007 graduate of Western Kentucky University, where he earned a bachelor's degree in exercise science prior to studying physical therapy. He is a proud graduate of Madisonville Community College, where he graduated with distinction in 2014. He is the recipient of the 2014 MCC Outstanding PTA Student Award and a finalist for the 2014 MCC Gardner Award. Brian is a APTA credential clinical instructor and is recognized by the Kentucky Physical Therapy Association as one of the first physical therapist assistants to hold an advanced certification in trigger point dry needling. Since be beginning his professional career with full, full physical therapy four years ago, Brian has had an integral role and the success of the practice which has grown to five clinics with more than 20 employees. In addition to treating patients in Beaverdown, Brian coordinates clinical education opportunities and is responsible for training team members at each of the five four PT locations. He has just recently began a new role directing the sports medicine and performance team which will serve athletes in 10 different counties. He has been an active member of the American Physical Therapy Association and Kentucky Physical Therapy Association since 2013. He is currently pursuing an advanced proficiency credential in the area of orthopedics through the APTA. Brian is a graduate of the Leadership Ohio County program. He currently serves as Vice President of the Ohio County Chamber of Commerce and he is involved in numerous community events throughout the year. Brian is happily married to his wife of eight years, Nina, who is also a native of Ohio County. And they have two beautiful daughters, Lily and Mia. Brian j recently just completed the Chicago Marathon, and in his free time, he enjoys traveling, running, playing tennis and golf, and loves spending as much time with his family and friends as he can. Please make welcome Brian Belcher. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you to the Chamber for allowing me to speak with you today. I enjoyed the time that we had last last year. I decided to do it again. Um, that's what I tell everybody, but quite frankly, nobody else wanted to do it from us, so I decided to step up and take care of it. But uh, you'll notice up on your tables, uh, you'll see the 
the red items, those are not a physical therapy tool. I want to be perfectly clear with that. That's a pizza cutter, okay? So don't use that as physical therapy because you might mark up somebody and they might not like that too much. And then also if you see those little bitty things on your table, the round circles with our logo on it, those are called pop sockets. Uh, for those of you with uh, younger children, you may see those carrying around on the phone. They, you can hold them in your hand or set them on a table. So I just want to bring a couple of those out to you. I, I find them very helpful, so I wanted to share those with you as well. Um, today I wanted to kind of build on what we are, are wanting to accomplish this year as we schedule our programming for the remainder of our meetings, and that is to give... <coughs> give information to our business communities on business specific types of things uh, that affect our small businesses and our industries as well on a greater level than opportunities of service uh, which are all wonderful things from a fundraising standpoint from a uh, from a service standpoint in the community uh, we wanted to dive a little bit deeper and, and give businesses some good information that they can take forward and hopefully make a positive impact on their own businesses as a result. As business owners, um, you're usually self-insured or many of you also offer health benefits to your uh, employees, which that takes up a large chunk of your operating budgets. Musculoskeletal disorders are one of the most common <coughs> problems leading to substantial disability and they place a financial burden not only on the individuals but also on the employer who offers those benefits. And over the past few years, as you've all realized, the cost of health care has increased substantially. So naturally, business owners and employees alike are constantly searching for ways to reduce their health care costs. Now, the treatment of musculoskeletal conditions, specifically spine-related disorders, is the most expensive category of health care costs. Those are your back pain and your neck pain and those types of things. Uh, it's also the primary reason for opioid prescriptions, and it's associated with more than half of all of the low-value healthcare services uh, that are out there. And while clinical guidelines for our treatment, our, for our hospitals and our doctor's offices, emphasize consistently the importance of conservative non-prescription and non-interventional first and second-line treatment approaches, a majority of clinical practices are still not well aligned with that and with these guidelines. And so as a result, physical therapists are really, or they're rarely, const they're rarely consulted uh, as the first provider for patients with spine disorders. Most <coughs> of your patients will go to your doctor, your nurse practitioner first when they have a, a disease that comes up. And if they're involved in the treatment process, there's often more, you know, if physical therapists are offered in that process, then it's usually about 30 days into the episode of care before they make their way into our clinics. So we've really got to change this. And physical therapy definitely needs to be looked at first for musculoskeletal injuries, which numerous studies are now showing proof that it will significantly reduce health care costs. A new study published by the Journal of Orthopedic and Sports Physical Therapy shows that seeing a physical therapist first can lower health care costs and reduce expenses related to imaging. Physical therapy patients that have had back or neck pain from 2016 to the present were studied in this, and the major finding illustrated that of the patients who came to PT through direct access, which is not needing a doctor's referral, for that care showed a cost savings of $1,543, which that is a savings of nearly 50% compared to those who sought therapy from our traditional medical referral system that is being used right now. So the study also showed that those in the direct access group had one less physical therapy session and spent 10 days less through their care. In addition, less than 20% of all patients did not require additional medical care beyond that, which further illustrates that a physical therapy first approach pathway is a cost, uh, a cost effective solution for injury and pain recovery. Now one thing I mentioned earlier I want to take a little bit about talking about is direct access uh, because I'm sure you probably have all heard that term and some of you may not be familiar exactly what that might be. 
But direct access is the ability of the patient, you the patient, to self-refer directly to uh, someone like a physical therapist. And that allows you to avoid that intermediate steps of going through other healthcare professionals that may lengthen that path to recovery. And fortunately for Kentucky, we are a direct access state. So that means regardless of the type of insurance that you carry, Medicare, Medicaid, commercial, etc., you do not need a doctor or a nurse practitioner to refer you for a physical therapy evaluation. And so after an injury to your back, knee, neck, shoulder, etc., you don't need to waste your time and, and in many cases weeks to get in to see your doctor. We've heard that a lot of patients have said that it takes them a long time to get into their doctor to push them out. And so, and, and then once they get there, the doctor will just most likely do their evaluation, but then turn around and give you a referral to PT anyway. So that step really can be eliminated. And so you think about it, wouldn't you want to go to see your physical therapist who is a movement specialist with the knowledge of all things regarding the musculoskeletal system to assess your injury communicate with your doctor on your behalf and to begin treatment right away instead of waiting potentially weeks after an injury before it gets treated. And also, the patients have the power to choose who their providers are going to be. You get your choice of, of doctors you have. Um, you get your choice of physical therapists that you have. And you get that, like I said, you don't have to have that physician's referral to come in and, and have your evaluation with, the, with, with a physical therapist or any other specialist for that matter. You don't have to go to, and you, don't, and you can choose to not have to go to some of the larger markets too that tend to cost a little bit more from an overhead stand like some of your hospitals. Uh, so, plus, you know, you don't want to go to like a Baptist Health or an Owensboro Health, um, because your doctor just happens to be at that location. If you want your physical therapy treatment from a provider in Owensboro, you can go to that from here. Or if you want a provider that's not affiliated with the hospital, you can come to another facility that's not affiliated with the hospital. So you have that freedom and you have that power and I wanna make sure that everyone understands that throughout the community. And the beauty of direct access, like I said, is the beauty, the beauty of that is that you get to bypass all of the extra stuff, all the, the travel, the trips, some of the unnecessary costs that are associated with that. You don't have to pay that extra copay uh, for your doctor's office. You know, all those little things add up pretty quickly, uh, not only for you individually, but also if you're sitting with your insurance, that, that goes through your company too, that's providing that insurance. So you definitely want to get started sooner uh, to get back to getting better, longer, faster outcomes. Um, you know, there's Additional benefits to receiving physical therapy for low back pain as a first line of approach other than going to a medical doctor or a nurse practitioner. And so doing so not only saves you money, but it dramatically reduces the chance of receiving an opioid prescription down the road. In fact, patients are 75 to 90 percent less likely to have short or long-term exposure to opioids if their first provider is a physical therapist. And numerous studies show that patients with low back pain who received care from a physical therapist first experienced lower out-of-pocket pharmacy outpatient costs after one year and they reduced their likelihood of receiving opioid prescription by 87% compared with patients who never visited a physical therapist. And that PT first group also was associated with a 28% lower probability of having imaging services and 15% lower odds of making a visit to the emergency department. Once again, all of those add up very, very quickly. Increased prescription of opioid medications can often lead to widespread misuse of both prescriptions and non-opioid prescriptions. In 2016, a national study on drug use and the health uh, on drug use and health reported that an estimated 28.6 million Americans ages 12 and over used illicit drugs during the month prior to that particular study. So that means that roughly one in 10 people, if this serves right, one in 10 people struggle with some level of substance use, including addiction to prescription drugs. It's again, another big cause. In 2015, Kentucky providers wrote 97 opioid prescriptions per 100 persons. And that equates to roughly 4.40 
4.47 million prescriptions for opioids in Kentucky alone in 2005. And that same year, the average rate for the U.S. was 70 prescriptions per 100 persons. That's a huge gap. And the breakdown, just to go a little bit further, from our county alone and some others that surround us, McLean County, they're about, they're, at that average, was about 87 opioid prescriptions per 100 persons. <coughs> Butler was at 98.5. Edmondson was at 90.9. Davis was at 103.2. Ohio, our county, was 112.3. Muhlenberg was 128. And Grayson was uh, top at 128.3 opioid prescriptions <coughs> per 100. So you can see it's a huge problem here. And that's going to trickle, that's obviously going to make a direct impact on our businesses here. And you should come to no surprise that poor labor market outcomes are highly correlated with the prescription of opioids and their availability. And so here's why that we here in the business community in Ohio County and surrounding areas need to pay close attention to what's going on with this when we talk about the opioid epidemic because it directly affects our businesses bottom line. Economists uh, Dionysi, Ali Prantis, and Mark E. Uh, Schweitzer estimated that participation in the labor force by men in their prime working years, which is generally between ages 24 to 54, was 4.6 less on average in counties with high rates of opioid prescribing than in counties with low prescribing rates, and even greater among men who had a high school education or less. In that group, the, partici the uh, participation rate in the labor force was 7.4% less among white men in high prescribing counties and 9.7% less among non-white men. And so with such large numbers of the potential labor force being prescribed and or on prescription opioids, this means that larger manufacturing firms are unable to recruit enough workers who could pass their drug screening. This means that Sometimes they have to operate with fewer employees than the company would like, which affects the customer service. It requires managers to pull extra shifts. It pushes up overtime costs. In addition, small businesses and large manufacturing firms see higher turnover rates in counties where there is a high opioid use rate, which means a higher cost to train new employees. Not to mention the potential for theft also significantly increases with these populations as well. Therefore, everyone has to work harder, and, then in, and in some cases, some things just get left undone, and it makes it harder for the next shift, which ultimately makes for decreased productivity and lower profits. Now, we didn't get here just overnight. In the, in the late 1990s, pharmaceutical companies reassured the medical community that patients are not likely to become addicted to opioid pain relievers, and so health care providers began to prescribe them at higher rates. In fact, the sale of painkillers has increased by over 300% since 1999, which has prompted the Department of Health and Human Services to declare a public health emergency just last year. Opioids address pain in a, in a different way, and they look like chemicals that the body produces naturally to regulate pleasure, pain, and emotions. So when you take an opioid, that drug attaches to parts of the nerve cells called the opioid receptors, where they can block the pain. But they also cause the pleasurable feelings that make people want more of them. And they also slow breathing, which is why overdoses can kill. And unfortunately, Kentucky is among the top 10 states in the country with the highest opioid-related overdose deaths. And in 2016, there were 989 opioid-related overdoses in Kentucky alone, a rate of 23.6 deaths per 100,000 persons, and that's nearly double the national rate. Now, don't get me wrong, there is a role for opioids in the, in the continuum of health care, but there has to be a greater focus on the prevention of addiction. And providers must understand that they have to convey to their patients effectively that the use of opioids comes with significant risks that effective non-pharmacological solutions and the fact that there are 
effective non-pharmacological solutions to pain management that do exist. And we're not doing that as much. There's a lot of people still think that that's a cure, you know, that's a one-stop shop where you get, I'm going to get this pill, it's going to make me feel better, I can go on with my life, but they don't think about all the other adverse effects that it causes. And so the role of physical therapy for that reason is now being recognized as one of the most effective non-pharmacological resources for pain management. And recently the CDC in its guideline for prescribing opioids for chronic pain states that opioids come with too many side effects and are far too addictive to be the first choice treatment for chronic pain and points to physical therapy as a proven alternative. But the challenge is to have the providers and patients to buy in but I do feel like if they hear this next example that they will think about a little bit more about their choices to maybe try PT first before seeking other avenues of dealing with their pain right away. And there was a doctor recently that had prescribed a patient physical therapy for pain to his injured leg, but the patient thought that physical therapy was uh, to be frank with you, pure, what was just BS. They didn't understand what it is that we do. And so he decided to throw that order away that the doctor had given to him. And instead, he tried pain medication for his leg pain. But the side effects were so strong, they even included hallucinations. <laughs> and so it led him to give it up. And so then because the opioids weren't helping his pain, the next option he went was to go through the imaging and to go through surgery. And this patient had 11 operations that were done before even beginning physical therapy. And after that, within this eight to 12 week period, his pain was significantly reduced. He didn't have to go through all of that. But people don't understand what that entails. And that's why it's up to us in the field of rehabilitation to allow people and tell them what the benefits are. And it also is important for our businesses to understand those because then we can, if we're dealing in our, our services to where we need to refer or get through, you know, we have an injury, an accident that happens on our job, we need to also say, hey, have you looked into to doing this route for your back versus going this way? and encourage them to go a different way to ultimately not only save them money, because, but also to save our company's money as well and our businesses. So uh, that's what I want to drive home with you. And I can only speak from my experience because you know, from the field of physical therapy and, and how that's addressed, of how we address our chronic pain patients, and I can only speak for our fuller physical therapy family on how we do it, but I do want to give you a little insight onto what that is it entails so that you can share that as well. Um, and those chronic pain patients are the ones that are at most risk for developing addiction and or physical dependency to the medications in which they're prescribed. But we like to work with the families and the providers. We also work with payers and other professionals across that continuum of healthcare settings from our primary care practices and our pharmacies to hospitals, behavioral health facilities, to effectively manage that patient's chronic pain. Um, change my page here. Our therapists are actively engaged in the examination process that focuses not only on that dysfunctional movement that they have, but those patterns that are resulting in their pain symptoms. But we analyze the various emotional, social, cognitive, psychological conditions that may be contributing to the patient's experience with pain as well. We treat pain with, as a symptom of an underlying musculoskeletal dysfunction as the approach that we take to that. And so during a treatment with our, with our patients with chronic pain, our clinicians will try to focus their shift, the, try to shift the focus of the patient off of their pain that they're experiencing through various strategies which place more of an emphasis on functional movements needing to complete certain daily tasks instead of focusing on what their perception of pain is that's preventing them from doing the things that they desire to do. And one of the most effective ways that we've found to treat 
someone with chronic pain is through the power of, ho of human touch. Hooking someone up to a machine with a little moist tea and or giving them a few exercises to do and then walking away has not and never will cut it for these particular patients. And they really don't do well for a majority of patients. So being high touch and high tech, being high touch and not high tech is the key to successfully treating our patients with the chronic pain. And our team of clinicians who provide that one-on-one -on -one care usually for the entire treatment recognize that this, and they combine the knowledge of the advanced manual therapy techniques with trigger point dry needling and soft tissue mobilization with patient specific therapeutic exercises and stretches that are designed to enhance that patient's functional movements so that they can complete activities that lead to a more fulfilling and productive life. And that minimizes those limitations altogether from chronic pain. And it's through this approach that we've, we've successfully helped many patients reduce their doses of certain pain medications. And in numerous cases, we've also found that they have eliminated the need for them altogether. Now it's a slow process and it takes a long, it takes a long time, but it's only, it appears to take a long time, but it's only just a small blip really in the whole idea of how much cost is going to be associated with managing the side effects that these opioids are calling, not to mention job prospects, etc. So it's worth it. It really is. And so in conclusion, I want everyone to remember that not only do you have the power to choose your therapist for evaluation, but also you need to choose physical therapy first instead of going to your doctor waiting to come in there or going to your nurse practitioner. Because that way we can get started quicker and helping you manage either chronic pain or that musculoskeletal injury and choosing physical therapy first not only saves you money but it dramatically reduces the chance of having those opioid prescriptions down the road which is extremely important because this opioid epidemic has caused a, a significant financial strain on our small business community and our manufacturing firms alike and so know that there are safer alternatives to pain management. And then of course, we've successfully helped manage patients to reduce their dosage of certain medications. And like I said, you can eliminate them altogether. It's possible. It's certainly possible. But finally, one thing is, if you or somebody that you know do struggle with opioid addiction or dependency, know that there's help available and our team and all of our other rehabilitation facilities that are here in the town are there and ready and willing to help. And if you have any additional questions, I'll be happy to stick around after this uh, to talk with you about that. And if you'll look on the back uh, as you're going out, there are a couple of different um, conditions that physical therapy treats that you can see what the approach is and those are all non-opioid related approaches so you can pick one of those up and match that up as well um, but I want to thank you once again for your time and I hope that together not only our our field of physical therapy but the business communities alike can work together to help to decrease this huge opioid epidemic that's occurring that's hurting our family our friends and our businesses. And so I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. We had a few to slip in after I introduced some of the other um, elected officials. We have Jason Hazard with Senator Rand Paul's office. Would you like to say anything? I'll be very brief. Uh, thank you. Uh, Senator Paul was in Central City this morning, and it's good to be here at the luncheon today. Uh, he was talking to Muhlenberg County representatives about issues that also affect Ohio County on coal, especially making sure the TVA continues to burn coal at the Paradise Plant, also discussing uh, the future of the Western Kentucky Parkway and trying to make that an interstate spur uh, with the spur here on the Natcher now, and also with I-169 and I-69 on the uh, Pennerell Parkway. So thank you very much. Look forward to visiting with everyone. Did Scott leave? Okay. Okay.
Joe Best, did you want to say anything about anything going on in Beaver Dam? Or? Um, we have treats on the trail. <laughs> Excuse me. We have treats on the trail Halloween, 3.30 to 5.30 at Beaver Dam Park. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have anything to announce? Go ahead. Courthouse Players, uh, our fall production starts this Friday. It's the Halloween Spooktacular, and it's really cute. It's got kids. It's a musical. So it starts Friday, Saturday, Sunday of this weekend, and next week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and Thursday night. I'll be there. I think the November meeting was the 20th. Is that right? Yes. So don't forget to come back for our November meeting, and we're all adjourned. <laughs>